What is up, everybody? Good morning. It is your Uncle Fish back again for another amazing school of fish every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on all of the Mr. Fish Comics channels. And Tuesday is public for everybody. Thursday is for patrons only. So if you want to get on and sign up for the Patreon, it's only three bucks to sign up to be able to get in on all the awesome uh live streaming action and then for five bucks you can get every comic i put up digitally for 15 you can get every physical copy i put out shipped straight to your door can't beat a price like that i'm fixing to put on a whole lot of issues of car pretty soon when y'all get in here let me know what you think of the new audio i'm trying out a new microphone i'm going to be moving the whole office pretty soon and i'm trying out some new setups and some new stuff try and get a feel for everything, see how it works. Trying to see if I can get all this stuff integrated in fancy new ways. So let me know if uh, things are working. Give me a comment. Let me know that you're there and what's going on. Uh, hope y'all all having a good day today. Like the mic. All right. Thanks, Rick Moody. I appreciate it. Good to have you here, by the way. Glad you can make it, man. All right, and the new little fancy chat thing up in the corner looking like the comic book bubbles is working, which is one thing I was worried about because I just started using OBS. I had some friends on another stream I was on, an art stream with a bunch of other pro artists, and they're like, oh, dude, you got to get OBS. You got to get OBS, and I was, I had no idea what it was, but I tried it out, and I've been playing with it, and it's really cool, and other than I'm still getting a click in the video but that's because of the electrical circuit i'm on i'm fixing to move offices specifically for that little click but yeah it does look different ordinary human person uh oh yeah why do we have different options in obs kyron i'm curious was it because of Streamlabs? anyway so i got obs i tried it out and now i can do all of this cool stuff like uh yeah, it is. It's also zoomed in a little bit. That's one of the things I liked about being able to go through OBS is I can zoom in and play with things a little bit. And I was getting really washed out from the lighting that I have here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's absolutely the difference. Uh, and partly I can zoom in on my camera, which also makes it a hair pixelated. But it lets me zoom in and crop out so much of the extra background and stuff that I couldn't get rid of on my webcam alone. And I get to play with the settings and I need to keep messing with it. But once I move, I'm going to be able to change my lighting and stuff and make it a little bit more effective and hopefully get better results out of it. And so I'm going to be updating all kinds of stuff in the future. This is just parts of it. And I got to figure it all out, work all the bugs out. Um, but I can go from like the background to the intro to this chatting section with the comments. What is up, John? Good to see you this morning, man. I can kick over here to the drawing and have my own royalty free music kick in and not be stuck with the stuff that's in uh, Restream. Yeah, the comment font is a bit much, and I can't change that with the comic book layout. Like, I wish I could, but I can't really do much about that. I can enlarge it a little bit. But, yeah, it's that 
blam font. It's it's bold, uh, but I can see it and I can tell what y'all are saying, and that's good because my camera is blocking the stuff over here on restream, so I can't see it where they normally come up. And this way, everybody gets to see it. Um, cool deal. And I can switch around to that. I can go to the headshot. I can go to me looking at you know whatever I have in the window there at the time. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm digging the way it's working out so far. I've got some bugs to figure out for sure. And, you know, I might need to up the RAM on my computer a little bit or something to handle everything. Uh, but I'm liking it so far. I'm digging it. All right. I was talking with Kyron the other day, speaking of the 1%, I was speaking to Kyron the other day and uh, we were talking as I got the last uh, commission done for him. And he's like, man, how'd you get that done so fast? And because it had this whole three point perspective scene in the background. I'll go ahead and pull that up real quick. Let's see. Open comic books. Kyron. And pull up the image and let's switch over here find the right window all right and he was wondering asking me like what's up katie glad you made it how i got that perspective shot done so quickly and it's one of the cheats that i picked up from another artist and i absolutely watch other artists art streams to pick up cool tips and tricks and stuff and uh <laughs> i appreciate that car And I've kind of touched on it before in some videos about how I do it and like some TikTok videos, but I thought this time I would like really go into it. Uh oh, cow in the garden. Yeah, you might need to go take care of that. You can always rewatch the show. You can't, you know, scroll back and get a cow out of the garden. Um, so I thought I would go through like how I do this and how I get these buildings done so quickly and they're still drawn in my style, but I found a really good way to get through it really quickly. And essentially what I do is I make like a really good face for the building. Sometimes I'll do two or three. Sometimes I'll do like a front face of the building that has like signage and doors and that kind of stuff on it. And then I'll do just a blank side for like the other side that doesn't have stuff on the bottom floor. A lot of the times when I'm doing these three point perspective shots, you never really see all the way down to the ground. You know, a lot of times it's up in the air or whatnot. You don't see that far, but sometimes I put that stuff in like I did on this building back here in the background. Um, you can see like back there, it's got uh, doors and stuff on it. And some of the other ones just are the same image all the way down. But anyway, I set up one really good image of a building and where did I put, there's my pen. Um, all right. We are going to set up a perspective grid real quick. Going to go to the ruler. Do, 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 do. Going to go to perspective and we're going to have one vanishing point go way over there. And we're going to have the other vanishing point a fair bit closer. And, uh, and let's even say we're going to have, we're going to have it looking down just because why not make it difficult? Okay. Now I'm going to go to my little straight line tool here. I'm going to Take my perspective layer, my perspective ruler, and I'm going to make it green because that makes it easier for me to be able to find it. And then I'm going to make a vector layer so it's easier for me to work on with outlines. I'm going to make it blue. And then I'm going to come in with my little tool here. And I'm going to sketch out some buildings. Just super quickity quick. Not putting a lot of thought into what I'm doing right now. I mean, not putting a lot of 
hard work into it. I don't like the way this perspective is laid out because I wasn't thinking three point when I set up the perspective lines originally, but it'll get the point across. Okay. Now we've got that. Um, I'm going to turn off my perspective rulers there. And then I'm going to go over here and import some of these images. And we're going to build some of these images in just a second. But I want to show you how I do it. And then, um, then we can build from there. All right. Uh, I'm going to go. Do, 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 do. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Um, I'm going to go to my references files and let's see. And the buildings that I built. And then I'm going to just grab a couple of these. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to import them. And you're going to see, like, I've got a couple of different building faces here that I've made that are, you know, in my style and whatnot. All right, I'm going to turn off those other ones. I'm going to take this one. And if I'm doing like a city that's going to have a lot of repetitive buildings in it, I will like, I won't use this version. I won't manipulate this version. I will make copies of it. So I've always got a clean version to go back to. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate that layer and scooch it over. This one doesn't really matter too much because it doesn't have a whole lot of three-dimensional elements to it, but that'll come up in a second. Uh, I'm going to click on my object selection tool there. And right down here, it says scale and rot rotate. I'm going to go to free transform. And I'm going to bring this. Oh, my mouse is doing something crazy on me. I'm going to bring this over here till it matches up to that line, that corner. And then I'm just going to bring it down here and match up to that edge. I'm going to grab this side and I'm going to bring it over here until it hits the corner of it hits that corner of the building. And then I'm going to take this one and bring it in here till it hits that. And wham, bam, I have that side of that building done in perspective quickity quick. I'm going to bring this one up here. I'm going to match that corner up i'm going to bring this corner down to hit up against that line and be about where that other corner is i'm going to grab this one bring it over there until that other top corner is hitting the top edge of the building and you can always go in and fine tune these um and then I'm going to grab this edge. I'm going to bring it and match. And this is where you got to get a little creative in moving it around to get all those to match up right. Because the angle that this is at drastically changes where all those match up at. But anyway, with a little finagling, you can usually get them to match up real, really well. Um, probably need to do some more finagling at this edge, I'm imagining. But anyway, that's basically the point of it. And then you can do it with all the other buildings. I really don't like the way these buildings are lay, laid out. False alarm, cows on the other side of the fence, thankfully. Good deal. Um, but that's the basics of quickly how I do that. Um, one thing that really comes in handy, let me turn these guys off and get them out of the way, is if you come down here to this layer um, and say, I'm going to delete that one. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. What am I? Pen. All right. I forgot to turn the perspective layer back on. 
is throwing some extra random lines in here along the surfaces of these buildings can really help when it comes to lining things up and making sure that they're going in the right direction. And I'll show you that real quick too. Just throwing random lines on here. So I've got some something to work with when I come over here to this other building and let's see, which building do we want to do? Oh, let's do this one. All right. Now with this one, I would be drawing the outside edge of the building. Whoops, let's turn it off. But this makes a really good face full of windows for like an apartment building. And again, I'm on my selection tool. This is a image object that's been brought in. It's set on free transform. So, whoops, I forgot. I need to make a copy and paste of that. I'm going to turn one of them off because I need to have a clean one to work with in a second to make the other side. Because it's a whole lot harder to make it work with one you've already been manipulating around. It's a whole lot easier to start with a clean one. And this is going to get a little bit small for that image. But whammo, bammo, there you go. And I can like line this up with that line there and this line up at the top, I can come in and check and see how do these lines line up in relation to these lines and everything is going nice and straight and looks good and matches up nicely. Now I'm gonna turn on the other layer that I had copied and pasted and I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna put him over here in that corner and then I'm gonna move this corner over to here. Move that there. And then pull this in. And I didn't make a matching line for that, for this line going the other way. But I've got all these other lines that I can use to look at to see when it feels like they're matching up well. And like this is going right through the middle of that panel on all of those. It's going right underneath that line on all of those. So I know that's lined up pretty clearly and pretty straight. But those lines aren't quite the same. They're a little bit higher. So I'm going to pull that down just a hair. And there we go. We got the two sides of that building. And now all I would have to do is use my perspective rulers to draw those edges, maybe a little crown molding kind of thing around the top of that building. And bam, that building is done. That, oh, that comes in so freaking handy. All right, I'm going to turn all of that off for now, and I'm going to make a new layer, a new vector layer, and we are going to make one of these building faces. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to search for um, all building text. Let's see. Go back. Yes, I can turn this on. All right. Um, and I'm going to search for images, and I'm just looking for something to give me an idea of what I want to make the building look like. And looking for a tall building texture, when you put texture in there, it's pretty much looking for things that you could like slap on a 3D object or something. And so you get a whole lot of really nice flat images usually. Uh, sometimes even tileable images, which is wonderful. And you can look around and look for different styles of architecture. Like I want to do something different that I haven't, I don't already have several variations of. And I have several variations of like the wall of glass 
tight buildings. Um, so I don't really want to do that. This is a little bit complex. Um, that's kind of cool. That's, that's not bad, but that's a little bit complex too. I have one that kind of looks like that already. Uh, do, 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 do. That's kind of interesting. Um, I don't want to do anything too complex because then when it gets too small, it gets blurry and weird. Or when it gets too large, it gets to looking kind of weird. Um, and I don't want anything just too plain Jane either. Because if there's not any interest to it, then it gets kind of boring quickly. Um, the whole building our castle, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I I did this on the face of the Kremlin. I found a really good front image of the Kremlin. And now, I mean, I spent like a day creating the image. But now I can recreate it anytime I want to. And that's kind of nice. Let's do this one. This is... A little bit different it's got a couple different types of windows in it so we'll do that all right i'm going to copy this image just so i can use it as a reference and let's go back to drawing and then i am going to paste so i've got it here and i can kind of look at how the building is laid out and what makes this interesting i definitely like the big block work in it i like the rectangular windows and then a series of round windows i'm thinking i'm probably going to multiply that and do that up again in the top section i like this section of molding here i always love moldings i just i just i dig moldings all right so I'm going to drop that down a little bit in transparency because it's over my other layer here. And and now I'm going to go to my rectangle tool. And I'm going to set it to probably 10 and see what this looks like. And come in and I'm going to draw a building about like that now originally i drew a whole bunch of my buildings on the same the same layout so that my windows and stuff would be the same height and that was good for what i was using it for in the beginning but now i'm realizing sometimes i need some wider buildings sometimes i need some skinnier buildings so i'm starting to think about that stuff too and actually i'm gonna make a wide one out of this just to do it and probably make a narrow one as well um now i'm trying to think through what is the best way to do this to get these kind of windows and get them replicating the way i want them to Ooh, and these will these windows have a casing around them and everything on the outside that's cool Lines of molding between everything. All right. And a lot of what I like to do for some of that molding is my bar that I made that is way too small to see what it's doing there. And way too big there. Let's try and see what through hard. And this bar is just, it's a white line with a thinner line on one side and a darker line on the other side, which does really good for drawing bars and windows and things like that, moldings, all kinds of things. It does really good, quick, fast, and in a hurry. So if I take it and come across like that, And then I copy and paste it and move it up a little bit for a section of that molding. And then I move this window up 
just a hair. And I'm going to enlarge a copied version of that rectangle to make the molding around. And one thing it's important to remember is it is better to it is better to make one really good detailed window in vector and be able to uh, recreate it, be able to copy and paste it, than having to recreate it over and over again. That is such a pain. You do not want to have to do that if you can help it. Um, up to over here what's old Kyron need me to check my messages for it's Kyron sending me another ransom message Kyron silly man you know I'm broke I ain't got no money paying no ransom hmm that's a shame let me see if I can do something about that. Let's see. Hmm. Can't change my settings on that. Hmm. There's a whole thing's coming out pixelated. Let me see. Settings. Let's see. Does that help any? Because my settings on restream were low did that help any or not i'm gonna check again see if those settings even took let's see video yeah it took Good deal. All right. Yeah, that was a problem in Restream. It was sampling. Because I'm outputting this as a virtual camera into Restream, it was sampling my camera at like 480 instead of 720. And my coffee's still empty. I keep reaching for it, and it keeps being empty. I don't know why Kyron hasn't had his servant come fill it up for me. It's only a wee little jaunt across the country. You could send him in one of the jets to do that, but no. Kyron's busy keeping everybody down. <laughs> I appreciate the looking out, Kyron. Thank you very much. Since it's all family here anyway. Oh, I didn't even see that was Phil on there saying, do an old building or a castle made. What's up, Phil? Glad you made it back, man. Yeah, Kyron's Butler slapping, slacking again. Uh, all right, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Kyron. You're good, man. I don't care what the 99% say about you. You're a good, man. All right, now I'm going to go back and look at my reference image again because I've not forgot what I was doing. All right. All right, and then I'm going to put a little fishy bar in here and but i don't want it at 150 because that's too big and i can always change it if i need to all 
All right. Now, now I'm trying to think through shadows and highlights because you're very rarely ever going to have one of these buildings looking at you directly face on. It's always going to be at an angle. So I usually pick one side that I'm going to make the lines darker for shadow and make the other side lighter for highlights. And so I'm trying to think that through right now. And I'll go ahead and make this side over here for me, the shadows. So I'm going to go over here to control point and I'm going to go to split line. And if I split that there, there, I can separate out this line and make it darker. And if I separate this here and here, then now I should be able to go to adjust line width and thicken. And I can just thicken up that side of it and darken that side and this side. So now like that's the side that has the shadow. This is the side that is lighter. And I might even narrow up this one a hair and that side a hair. Um, hold down shift so it goes straight. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to undo that. And I'm just going to shrink it a little bit so that it hits where I want it to. There we go. All right. And it seems like a little thing, but when you throw it in perspective and they all have that little bit of edge on it, it really helps. It really helps a lot. Uh, all right. So we got that. We got one of those windows made. Now I'm going to hold down shift and select all of the parts now because I separated them. I'm going to copy and paste and hold down the shift and the up arrow so that it moves a little faster. And I'm going to zoom, zoom, zoom that on up. I'm going to grab these guys. And I'm going to copy and paste them as well. And... Move them up above that window frame so that it's got a little molding on it. I'm going to take this one up higher, though. Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to make that fat. Uh, let's look at the reference. See, that's a big area right there. I want to kind of mimic that a little bit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab all of this. And that. And that. And that. And that. And I'm going to move it up all higher so I can put a row of block in there in between those. All I want to do is zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. Just shake your arm. <laughs> Endless cup of coffee. That would be awesome. All right. And now I'm going to, let's see. And the section up above the rounded windows has a big chunk on them, too. So I'm going to grab those. And I'm going to copy and paste the whole nine yards. And I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to go up a hair higher because I'm going to round the top of this window. And there we go. And now we got that. And then I'm going to copy and paste again. And I'm going to take it up for another set of windows. It rests right on top of that like the other one did. And then once, whoa, that went too fast. Crazy old mouse. 
being all willy nilly on it. I can use that, but I, I don't care for it. It's not it's not giving me round enough. I want round on the tops. I like them real round, John told me. That's what Kyron said. I tend not to argue with my betters. Let's see. Where is it? Where is, come on, mouse. Oh, I know what the problem was. I didn't click that circle again. It was trying to rotate that perfect circle. And I couldn't tell because it was perfect. Couldn't tell that it was rotating. Silly old simple-minded fishy. That's what Kyron calls me. I try not to take offense to it, but you know. Oh, that's wrong. Right? I forget sometimes from which tool I'm using, uh, which program I'm using, which quick keys do what. Control paste. And then we'll grab that corner and then hold down shift and alt so that it comes down in the center. And keeps its size. And now I can bring that up to there. And I can bring that up to there. And then I am going to come back down here and I'm going to go back to control point split line. And I am going to cut these circles where I want them to be rather than just trying to erase them and get them where I want to be because it always ends up leaving me with some weird little bits that I didn't want where I didn't want them. And so I can just pick and choose exactly where I want to cut that line and get rid of the part I want. And when I'm doing architectural stuff like this, I want it to be exact. I want it to be right where I want it to be. Um, all right, now I'm gonna go back to adjust line width and thicken, and I'm gonna match that up there. And then I'm gonna go to narrow, and I'm gonna turn off process whole line and just tap no, that's hitting both of them. I was afraid it was going to do that because they're just so close together. All right, I'm going to grab that and shrink that down for now. Go back to narrow, and I'm just going to tap this corner of it until I get that to better match up with this line. And maybe stretch that out just a little bit so that lines up and stretch that just to here bum, 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 bum. all right i'm gonna do the same thing for this i'm gonna move this out of the way because this gets a little bit tricky it doesn't tend to have as smooth a transition as I really want, but I really just want to thicken up this side. And that's not too bad. It's maybe not as good as I would have liked, but it's not too bad. And this is going to be a big... It gets a little edgy. Like, it tends to put a lot of little extra bins in there when it's doing that that weren't there and weren't necessary, but I'm not going to get too hung up about it. All right, so I got a neat little curvy curvy at the top of the window there, which makes that window a lot taller. Let's look at these other ones. Are they this? They're maybe a little bit taller, but they're not that much taller. So I'm going to grab both of those and I'm going to bring them down to about there because like 
as anybody's known working with fonts and stuff, the rounded fonts are always bigger than everything else because of the optical illusion that happens that makes them look smaller than things with like flat tops like the other windows. So I'm going to make this window a little bit taller, which means everything above it is going to get bumped up a little bit. So I'm going to select all the parts again of everything, which this can be a little monotonous sometimes. And there have been a lot of times that I've gotten almost everything selected and then selected the wrong thing and I can't get rid of it. Oh, dang it. Like I was selecting everything great and then it just unselected everything and started over. So I'm going to select it again and grab that. Move them up just to scoochy scooch. All right, good to go. It's always bigger because of optical illusion. That's what she said. Indeed, indeed. Don't tell my wife I'm lying. Come on, Karen. You used to be cool. Don't tell my wife I'm a liar. She wouldn't like me if I'm a liar. What I need to do is, really, I need to grab this whole thing and shrink it down. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the resize the scale tool there and we'll drop it all down a little bit because I want to fit a whole other line of windows up there. But I also still want this to be big and wide. So I'm going to select that and the crossbars. And I'm going to stretch all that out this way so we can have a still have a nice wide building. And I'm going to select off that. Then I'm going to come back and select that guy. And I'm going to go up so we can put another line of windows in there. And I'm going to go down so there's enough room for a ground floor down there. All right. And now... I'm going to grab this here around the window, or winder if you're from around here, and that space between, uh, copy and paste, put it up at the tippity top. So all the best floors get the round windows. All the common folk get square windows. That way, Kyron can know he's better than everybody because he's got fancy round windows. Even if his butler actually accidentally booked him in the middle section. All righty. There we go. That's looking good. It's looking good like it should. I like that the way it is. Bum, 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 bum. It's weird to me that the blocks in this are all even. Like, in my brain, half of those blocks should be cut in the middle. But, oh, I, I should have known. Hiron, Kyron lives in a giant geodesic dome, and all his <laughs> windows are hexagon shaped. Says it helps focus his Pentagon power, his pyramid power into his brain. Pentagon power? Focuses the power of military overreach and gluttonous military spending into my brain. That's too thick a line, Fishy. You don't need it. Thick a line there.
What program am I in, Rick Moody? I'm in Clip Studio, buddy. That's where your fishies and your Chirons do all kinds of amazing work. You, 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 Katie Roostons, if you will. Is that fishy? You made it too big. It went too far. What's wrong with you, boy? You ain't paying attention. You bother me, boy. Pay attention. Look at what you're doing. You're acting a fool on the internet. But I can grab them all and there they go. Now they're all fitty fitty. And now I'm going to copy and paste and Pick that up and see just how far off that is for this one. Let's see. This is where I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. They did make them the same height. That did not. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stretch them suckers. I'm just going to stretch. That's what Kyron told me to do. I'm nothing if not obedient. And then I'm going to grab it, move it. I'm going to hold down shift so that they go straight. And match up here. I couldn't work out why my internet was being slow. Then I remembered I just set a 23 gig game installing. I remember when games fit on six floppy disks. Oh, man. Absolutely. Started using Illustrator for stuff like this and then finished in Procreate. Clip seems like the best of both worlds. Should probably just use Clip. Oh, man. I'm telling you. You got to you gotta figure out Clip. Like I mean, there, there's a learning curve. If you haven't used it, there's a little bit of stuff to learn, but it's so much like so many of the other programs that it's really not that hard to pick up. And, you know, like if you've been using Illustrator and Photoshop and CorelDRAW and things like that, like this is going to be easy enough to pick up. Okay, we got all those set. I'm wondering if I could set my selection tool to be able to drag a box like I can with my text. Hmm. Oh, select area by drag. All right. There we go. Let me see. Can I deselect? Uh, let's see. All right. Let's let's turn it to a negative selection and click on those. There we go. Now I can deselect the parts that I don't want because I turned on the subtractive part of the select object. Select the box. Because drawing the box around it selected everything that box touched, not just the things it completely encompassed, like Corel Draw does. All right, now copy and paste that whole section. Hold a little shift and shift. Whoops, we went too far, Fishy. You got ahead of yourself, son. You got to pay attention, pay attention, son of talent. Didn't watch too much Foghorn Leghorn as a kid. Kyron did. I'm trying to think of a more alec way 
it's more like a cartoon to blame Katie's accent on, and I can't think of one right now. <laughs> For the life of me right now, I can't think of any cartoon with a Scottish accent but Scrooge McDuck, and she don't sound nothing like Scrooge McDuck. I dare say that'd be an insult upon such a lovely lady as Katie. As it sounded like Scrooge McDuck, I wouldn't do it to her. Wouldn't get caught doing it. Wouldn't be proof. All right, grab that and that and that and that. And that. And we're gonna grab 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 that. And then we're gonna hit X. And then we're gonna hit V, control V, so that it pastes down on top of everything the way a man would do it. Because we're nothing if not macho, macho men. Cause I wanna be a macho man. <laughs> I've lived in Scotland for 20 years and still don't have the accent. Okay, he's fake Scottish. <laughs> I'm technically English. Okay. I still don't know what cartoon to blame for an English accent. Like I try and blame Foghorn Leghorn for mine, so I don't know. Of course, I also just talk a lot of nonsensical crap sometimes, too. I know y'all haven't noticed. I know you're too kind to point it out, but sometimes I talk a lot of random nonsense on the show. Which is kind of an integral part of my personality. The randomness and the nonsense. <laughs> I gotta tell you what though, being able to have some better music on the show absolutely helps calm my ticks down because the way I was going earlier today, woo, I thought this was fixing to be a show for the ages. I'm a Euro Mutt or extra Northern Islander, lol. I used to watch Watership Down when I was a kid. This one pull out a little bit, a little bit more of an edge around those bricks on the outside. I'm kind of digging that, except I just realized. I didn't want those bricks to go all the way up. Because I don't have them up here. Stupid fishy. But I do kind of want them on the sides. So yeah, it's not totally stupid fishy. All right. And looking at the reference image, they don't continue to have that molding between them up there. So if we want to be accurate. We're going to click off of it, and then we are going to take away some of these. And we're going to take away some of these. Because we didn't need those in the middle. Because it doesn't have them in the middle, but I'm going to turn the ones in the side into the bricks going up the side of the building because i like those little fancy brick caps on the ends of buildings i just dig it i think it's cool so i'm gonna select these and get rid of them and leave the ones on the side and then we'll put some fancy molding at the top of the building and something at the bottom I dare say if one of us wasn't talking nonsense all day, we'd probably be done with this already. Uh, I don't have the accent I should have as my grand thought I would have. Better job 
prospects if I spoke Queen's English. It's not helped me get jobs at all, and I missed out on having a cool regional dialect. Uh, I feel you. You could voice cartoon version of Ted Lasso. Same accent, even though he's from Kansas. <laughs> Actually, Little Miss White, I'm originally from Oklahoma. So, I mean, I don't claim it because, like, my parents are from Arkansas. My parents are from South Arkansas. They were only in Oklahoma for my dad's job. As soon as my parents got divorced, me and my mom went back to Arkansas. My family's in Arkansas. So I don't tend to claim it too loudly around here that I was born in Oklahoma. Um, but I was. And so, you know, you know what I also I just realized? These aren't all the same size either. So I'm just going to get rid of these two and start with a section that I know is all the same size. But anyway, so yeah, that would put our access, our base accents at pretty close to the same because all the Southernisms I've picked up since then are all like since moving down here. I don't mean like they're, I don't know. I don't know how best to put it. But I picked them up since I've been living down here. And they're part of the way I talk now. Part of my regular dialect. But they weren't there originally. They're stuff I picked up along the way. I was born in I was born in California. People tell me I talk hella crazy. Indeed. I was always really bad about picking up stuff I heard on TV and making it part of my everyday speech. Because, you know, frankly, hell I listen to people on TV talk more than I listen to people in real life talk. And so it just like became part of my everyday dialect and people would get mad. Like when I picked up dude and it just became a permanent part of my lexicon. And they're like, you're not from California, man. And I'm like, dude, I don't care. I don't know what you're talking about. That's just the way I talk now. It, it's evolved with me like everything else has. Just like under yonder has evolved with me and become a part of my everyday conversation. And Naria, I love Naria. That is one of my favorite phrases in the world. Naria, hair on his head. Or whatever. I, oh, I love Naria. That is, that just melts my butter. Where is it? No, it is here somewhere. Where is it? Oh, damn, I don't have it on here. That's right, I'm on the wrong computer. Isn't there a Tattershall Castle in Yorkshire? Is it Tattershall? Or is it Tatershall? No offense, but as much as people have screwed up my name, you know, and I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking taters, but you know, that's the hard part about being on the internet is like, I was friends with Kyron for a long time, had absolutely no idea how to say his name. The H is silent. Tattersall. It's hard to take that H out. It's hard to see it there and not say it. Tater salt. Okay. Tater salt. Tater salad. They call me tater salad. Tater salt. That, that, that's a good way to spell that out. Make it obvious. Make it easy for people to understand. I dig that. I don't want to put it. I don't want to stick it out. I need to hear Katie say dude now. I can't believe I've never heard you say it before. <laughs> uh, 
I I gotta admit now I kind of want to hear Katie say dude too. Here say righteous. All right, now I'm gonna select every other brick. Every other brick in the wall. All in all, you know where. Just a decorative brick at the edge of the building. And I forgot to hold down shift, so now I gotta start all over. I wonder what song's gonna play next. The same song? That's amazing! It's Wednesday's topic now. <laughs> I want to hear Katie say, Cowabunga! As the British are known to do. As Paul Revere famously said, the British are cowabunga <laughs> I'm such an idiot! Oh, God, I love myself. Oh, I'm so cool. Y'all lucky to know me. That's all I got to say. Tell my wife that all the time. You're lucky to have me. People pay good money for these laughs. And you getting them for free. Okay. Select. Grab that. And then I'm going to turn on remove from selection. And I'll click that. And then I'm going to copy and paste. And then I am going to miss what I'm aiming for. That's not what I wanted. And then we're going to drag it over here. Over here. And we're going to bump it up against this wall. And we're going to get real close up over here to this winder. And I believe maybe we need to get a little further away from that winder. All right. So now we got that much of it done. I gotta decide what I want to do in these sections here. So I could do anything. I could do anything. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all the elephants in my way. Whoops. That's because you haven't been in a car with me, sir. That's why she hadn't heard her say, dude, in British. I'll put these in slightly different places there so that it's not too much the samey samey. And then I'm going to, nope, I'm going to grab that one, grab that, and then I'm going to hold down the shift and grab that and that, and then I'm going to hit the control and the V and kind of copy and the paste and the things and the, move that on up to the sky, to a deluxe apartment in the sky high high. Is we're moving on up to the upper molding. Now the dude bro is going to ask, are you holding? Delete a boo. 
Cebu clay. Go grab that. Go grab. Go try that one. We ain't gonna grab that one because we can't do it because the stupid handle. Oh, my Facebook's dinging. Who rang my dinger? Let's get over here and see who rang my dinger. Oh, dang. My wife's ringing my digits. She knows I'm on my show. Crazy wifey. Silly wifey. I'm not done showing what I'm showing yet. Can't go now. Oh, you know what? I just realized without that molding, there ain't nothing under them windows. That's a non-starter, says old fishy. So we're going to put a window seal under it, just like that there. And... Let's see. Let's break that up. Control point, split line. Shikasha. Shikasha. Now we're going to go to adjust line width and thicken. And we're going to make sure we're processing the whole line. And shikasha, baby. Let's follow and see where it goes. Oh no, there he goes again, running off screen. Whatever will we do? We're gonna scroll down and find him. That's what we'll do. I believe. Oh no, wait a minute, he wasn't supposed to be there. Because what was supposed to be there ended up up here because I copied, but apparently I did not paste. So let's control B and move it on down to where it's supposed to be. All right, that's where that one set went to, but these guys still need it. Dang it. Why did not you copy and paste? I hit the buttons. Before you do not do what I tell you to do. Control C, Control V. So he did that then. I don't know why you don't do it regularly. Like. Why don't you do it at the regular time? Why you gotta embarrass me in front of both my friends? Sitting here trying to look like a professional artist, trying to keep up appearances so I can make a little money. Trying to make me look a fool. Bet you I hit shift C. Instead <laughs> of controls, what I probably did. I'm probably the one making me look a fool. But it's only because I are one. All right. What do we got there? Sounds like my kid's trying to embarrass me in public. I'm telling you. Oh. 
I like my dad so poor he has to use cash. <laughs> he only has hundreds. All our friends' parents paying the blooms. I'm assuming it's how the upper crust makes fun of each other. Say, old chap, did I hear you're out of doubloons? No, it's just my kids being silly. Oh, oops. I was going to say, if he was out of doubloons, he's out of the 1%. You know the rules. We eat the rich around here. Absolutely. Karen, send one of you guys over there to England. Help Katie out. Skyland, sorry. How rude of me. I'll put a round window down here, too. So I'm going to copy all these little parts of this little round window. And I'm going to hit the control. I'm going to hit the V. And we're going to see what happens. Well, I hit the control in the C. Then I hit the control in the V. So otherwise, I'd just be pasting a bunch of nonsense. And we know I don't stand for the nonsense. I won't have it. Uh, I think this needs to go further in. And I'm going to put another row of blocks here. Why? Because I can't. That's why. I need to make a cake. I agree, sir. You do need to make a cake. I agree with that 150%. I think she needs to make us all a cake, but you know, I could be talking poppycock. It's happened. It has been known to happen. Okay, you know what? That's not going to work, but oh, yeah, and I can do the additive and then come over and grab these two. Oh, man. Right on. Roy, just hold down the little old shift key. Hold down the shift key again so it rotates in sections. Hold it down again so it just moves where I want it to. Oh, forgot I had that on. CV. Move him over there. Now I got room for an old door. Got room for a door. What's more, I probably got a door I could put there. This fish is nothing if not a pack rat. Keep all the pieces of all the things. Because you never know when you're going to need it. That's what your Uncle Fishy says. And it's not one of the crazy things he says. It's not one of the nonsensical things. It's not one of the crazy things like, oh, the gays ruined homosexuality for the rest of us. No, this is something you can take to the bank. You can take this to Karen's bank. Now hold on to all your extra pieces, all your bits. Hold your bits. That's what Karen told me. It's a butt cake. I mean, a cake shaped like a butt, not made of butter. Well, it could be made of butter. 
Could be made of the butt of wheat. What is the butt part of wheat? Thinking about Scottish accents, the people around here sound like the... Oh, the kid in Brave who none of the others understand. <laughs> You're right, sir. That kid threw me off because of the font. It kind of all blended together there. Um, all right, let's see. Do I have it saved in here? Let's try import and see if I was smart enough to put it where I think I put it. And let's go to comic books and see. Did I save the door in here? Uh, shipping containers, star, shipping containers, chain link fence, octagon floor, panel layout, copyright. Uh, nope. Let's look for door. Well, that's a shipping container door. I don't want a shipping container door. I want... I know y'all can't see what I'm doing because it's only showing you... Uh, that's not the door I wanted, but... This is not a bad door. It's not a shameful door. It's just not the door I was expecting. But... I'm not going to fuss about it right this second. Now I want to take it off a of free transform, take it to scale and rotate because I don't want to get this door all out of shape. Now I'm going to take it to free transform and move it in over here. Move that up here. It looks like the back door and not the front door. But I could change it up some. But for right now, it'll do what we need. And let's see. I'm going to turn that off. And so, all right, there we go. We got the face of this building. I could even add brick textures and stuff in here if I wanted. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to select all that right there. And I've got that selected. I'm going to turn off the background so it's transparent. And then I'm going to go to export single PNG. And then I'm going to go back into my, where is it? References and textures. And then I'm going to go into fish buildings because that's where my buildings are. And we're going to make this building 15. And we are going to only do the selection area, full size, shebang, shabazzle, Haas and Pepper Incorporated. All right. Turn those off. Don't turn that back on. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. So. All right, we are going to just hit delete on that and get rid of that all together. We're going to make a new perspective layer real quick because I didn't care for that one. And I'm going to say that's one face of the building. And that's the other face. And... It's going up like that there. All right. Um, and now we are going to come back. We're going to draw in a building real quick. Different tool. And It's a wonky looking building. I'm not really thinking through my perspective well enough. <laughs> it didn't need to be three point perspective. But I did it, so I ain't gonna be hung up at it. And I'm just throwing a couple of lines across here just to help me line up things. I don't 
always do it. If I can draw all four edges of the building and see them clearly like this, I won't necessarily do it. If the building's going off into the distance and I can't see it, I will throw some of these lines in down the side of the building to help me make sure I'm getting it laid out correctly. All right, we got that there. And then I'm going to go to import image and references and textures, fish buildings, and I'm going to get building 15 that we just made. And boom, it brings it in as an object. I'm going to take it from free to scale. And like right now, I want to look at which way is this side of the building going? And because that side of the building is going away, I want the shadow on this side over here the way it is so that it's going away from me and all right there like that. And I kind of like to try and get it lined up on one corner as straight as I can sometimes just because that makes it a little bit easier for me. Then I'm going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it over here. And I'm going to resize it until they get to the same size. And then I'm going to butt it up over here against that corner too. And now I'm going to change my selection tool from scale and rotate to free transform and click on it. And it's not showing you all that, is it? That's a shame. And then I'm going to bring this edge over here. I'm going to match that up to that corner. Boom. And then I'm going to drag this one over here. Now, I could have made a, a separate side for this building that didn't have that bottom door on it or had a different window layout or whatever, and that would have been fine. And like I said, sometimes I do that. That's part of why I like laying these out the way I do, and I can copy and paste everything and make a whole different building out of it with a lot of the same parts and just use the parts in different order or move the windows around or, you know, make it so the windows don't match up so much from floor to floor and maybe they are offset from each other, whatever, you know, some of these different buildings do. And just stretch that out into perspective. And again, this is kind of a wonky perspective because this building is massive in this perspective, which is making it kind of skewed. But the point I wanted to show was because we made one side of this darker than the other, now this side, they've got a little bit of 3D edge to them. And in this side, they have a little bit of 3D edge to them. If I had made a separate side for this, I could have flipped the way the pattern in this brick goes so that where there's a short brick here, it would be a long brick here, which would be more accurate. Um, that would be a nice little touch to add to it, though every once in a while you see something like that. But there you go. We've created a brand new face and we put it on a wonky shaped trapezoidal building. And, you know, making the building takes a while. That is absolutely uh, part of the deal. Uh, you're investing some time in drawing the building at first, but you spend that time drawing the building one time. We got that building drawn in under an hour, really, especially with all the chit chat and, that y'all were doing. Um, <laughs> it's not the door we deserve. It's the door we need. It's a door that talks really gruff and the lights out. So that you can't see that the door is actually secretly rich. Um, but, you know, you spend that effort in the beginning. You make the building look right the first time. And then you can just knock them out over and over again. And I've honestly noticed the more simple you make it, the better it looks most of the time in the background. If you put too much detail in it, it doesn't look right. I honestly, I made this building with the idea of being close up on these like you know having something that takes up more of the page uh like let me show you what i'm looking at right here uh something that takes up more of the page like this is what i made this image with in mind and 
sometimes I'll even go in after the fact and I'll draw in some extra stuff and I might come in here in these corners once the uh, once the building's done. Let me turn off the perspective ruler real quick because that's going to mess me up. Okay. Like after the jobs, after the building's all laid out, I may come in and draw some of this stuff that, why is it, oh, it I turned it back on, you know, and give it some three-dimensional shape around these edges. And, uh, you know, maybe this part here comes way out and extend some of this stuff out, you know, on the finished piece. And maybe this has, you know, that, square tooth pattern coming around. I, you can do all kinds of extra stuff to it after the fact. Some of the windows could be broken out and, you know, the buildings abandoned or, you know, you could come back in and some of the buildings are, um, some of the windows are boarded up and whatnot. Like you can do, whatever you want to it after the fact or you could just use it as a layout to figure out where everything is real quickly and then do something really drastic like i had to do a city one time where like it was new york but the city was overgrown for thousands of years by plants so i would throw some of these walls in for the buildings to lay it out real quick so i would know like where the windows are and then i would have giant draw giant roots coming out of all those windows to the tree that's grown up through the whole building and leaves coming out everywhere. And like 90% of the building got covered with leaves and roots, but it showed me where to draw these massive roots going in and out and down and around and, you know, stuff like that, which really helped out. Or, um, you know, maybe you're doing a bombed out building, which, okay, let me combine these two together real quick and layer mask mass selection and nothing selected so it doesn't do anything and then i'm going to come over here to my lasso fill and transparency and i'm going to cut out all right like that dang it didn't get it okay there we go now i got them both selected layer mask mask selection and we're going to do like that and we just cut out a big chunk of that building and now we can um I'm still on that. Make, make a new layer because it mask. And you can draw this real quickly, and now you've got this destroyed out building. And you might have to do some guessing and some perspective work to figure out, like, you know, where did the floor get broken? And But, you know, bam, you got a bombed out building real quick. It's, it comes in so handy for so many things. And even if it's just laying out where you want it to be so you can go back and draw over it in your own style, you could just do a layout that has like floors marked and spaces for window and some uh, horizontal and vertical lines for you to measure from and throw that in here. And then you know, okay, this is where the windows should be or this is where I can put windows. This is where a floor should be and draw whatever kind of building you want and you know just use it as a template it works really great for a lot of different things i really 
it has saved me so much time in putting together perspective scenes and blown out buildings and falling over buildings and all kinds of different stuff. I've used it so much. It comes in so handy, so much so that even like if I'm doing the inside of a building and like Eric Ben has talked about having me do issues of steel wolf for him down the road. And part of, part of it takes place in this bar. It's going to be a, a regular scene in this book. So I've been thinking about laying out the bar as a floor plan so I can draw out the floor in perspective, bring that floor plan in, drop it in, bend it, get it into shape. And then I know this is where booths are. This is where the tables are. This is where that pillar is that sticks up in the middle of the room. And like, say that pillar comes up and it's covered with bumper stickers. Well, I can make a nice flat image of each side of that, draw that pillar in place where the floor plan showed me it is, drop those sides on, and then draw a few little details here or there that, you know, make flesh it out, make it fully three-dimensional. And boom, we're done. I don't have to remember how all those bumper stickers looked because I laid all the bumper stickers out, you know, one time right. Took the time to do it right the first time. Um in T-Man and Hyperstrike, I knew one of the one of the scenes takes place in an art room, and our teachers' walls are always covered with crap. They're covered with so much stuff. So I drew one of the walls flat with everything written on the board, all the masks and the paper mache and all the stuff hung on the walls, and then I could just bend it and skew it into perspective, and it worked for like 90% of the shots. And occasionally it would be at so much of an angle that like the mask looked weirdly flat. But this showed me where the mask is supposed to be, what size it's supposed to be in perspective. And then I could erase out the center of it and draw the mask from the side and draw the things that are supposed to poke out from the macaroni art or whatever's hanging on the walls, streamers, whatever. And it gives me a good layout and everything else works nice and flat. You can do things you can do images in parts like sometimes you've got like raised sections of the wall that stick out and then you've got recesses with windows in them you could do the windows on one layer one image like this and the raised parts in another image bend it into perspective bend this one into perspective and then shift them a little bit and now the windows kind of tuck in behind the brick a little bit because you're looking at an angle so much stuff you can do with this uh, I'm really thinking next time, maybe we'll talk about the ship, the spaceship texture that I made for the ship in Kaw, because I have used that so much since then for so many things, and it was so easy to do. And I think y'all will get a kick out of how easy it is to use and how you can do some really cool stuff with it really quickly. So we'll give that a shot. Um, anyway. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all being here. I appreciate y'all chiming in. I appreciate you letting me know that the feed was coming out fuzzy so that I could fix it. Uh, I will see almost everybody Thursday on my Patreon only uh, School of Fish. And it'll be Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, 10 a.m. Central. And I don't know what it is in bougie Chiron time. Uh, I don't have a sundial, so I don't know how to convert. But anyway... Love you guys. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. And I will see you Thursday or Tuesday. Either one. Later.